Happy birthday to the king. Happy birthday to the king. Happy birthday, Dr. King. Forever grateful to you. <sighs> Thank you. On Valentine's Day, what would you consider to be a fantasy Valentine's Day? Anything and I have to re repeat the question. Yeah, incorporate the question and then look at me when you. Shh. Okay. Can you stand out there for me? And then I'll stand out there for you. Um. My fantasy Valentine's Day, I think we have to do something with rose petals, water, and a warm place. So use your imagination. <laughs> Now, now talk about what has been your best Valentine's Day to date to this, up to this point. My best Valentine's Day to date was, you know, the best ones are, are actually the most simple. When somebody is really just feeling you hard and um, like a, for me personally, it was just big, big bouquet of flowers at a place I never expected it. So I almost didn't even know who it was from. And so when I read it, then I was like, oh, that was really sweet. So it's like the unexpected little things that, for me, make it the best. Now, now so often when you ask that question to somebody, they see what somebody has done for them. What have you done on Valentine's Day? What have I done on Valentine's Day? I remember cutting school. Oh, we can't say that. I can't rep that. That's wrong, right? Give me real. I remember cutting school with my first boyfriend right on Valentine's Day. I remember that I was like, you know, I wrote him this whole kind of handwritten, you know, I got like a pretty card and, and completely wrote it myself, you know, my uh, kind of a poem and poetry. And I remember we met up, because I guess we both cut school that day. Try not to cut school, but you know, Valentine's Day, sometimes you have to make an exception. And we hung out and we had a ball. We had like a really good time and he was really appreciative to my sensitive side, you know. <laughs> What would you consider to be your definition of love? Respect. And, um... Now, incorporate the question. My, okay, sorry. Uh, my, my definition of love is, um, respect and not judging and just really trying to, um, bring the best out of another person. I think that's love. Um, just a couple of drops. I want you to look straight into the camera and say, hey, this is Alicia Keys. I want you to have your Valentine's Day for me and BET. Okay. Three, two. Hey, this is Alicia Keys wishing you a beautiful and happy, special Valentine's Day for me and BET. This is Alicia Keys and you're watching 106 in Park. Okay. What's up? Three, two, one. What's up, y'all? This is Alicia Keys and you're watching 106 in Park, the live show. <laughs> Keep it locked, 106 in the park. Three, two, one. <laughs> What's up? This is Alicia Keys. Keep it locked. Stay right here watching 106 in the park. All right. Now, this question. This question is, being an artist is like living under a microscope. You're going to repeat this. But one thing the public doesn't know about me is... None so of your business. If you don't know it now, you ain't going to know it. I ain't going to tell you. That's for sure. <laughs> Being an artist is like living life under a microscope. You're not going to get, you're going to get something public. just like that. You know that, right? I'm, I'm saying it could be anything. You're going to get it something like, just you know, like that. You could be a pro bowler and people don't know it. You know, it's just something. You, can you cook really well? People don't know that, you know? Oh, yeah, I hook you up know, some so shrimp. People always got to take it, you know. <laughs> I hook some shrimp up. Come to the crib. Let me think. Let me think of something. So. Being an artist is like living life under a microscope. But one thing the public doesn't know about me is they don't say anything like my tour dates are such and such and such. Exactly. <laughs> come through. <laughs> no. Um, you want to think about that for a minute and come back to it? Yeah, let's come back to that. All right. We did this thing called BET First. I don't know if you've seen them on the air with like, uh, my first. So I'm going to give you a series of first and you elaborate. My first kiss was 
Good gosh, you know. I, I'm just trying to. Lord of mercy. Take here. These are mostly personal questions, but. Okay, what, what else? First kiss? First, first kiss. First, oh, that was the only option? No, first kiss, first concert, first movie. How'd you feel? We're talking about feelings, emotions here when these things happen. Dig deep. And, and feel free to say whatever comes right off the top of your head. At the top of your head. Okay, what am I supposed to say? Your first kiss. Oh, I'm supposed to say all of these? Yeah, just or one or the other. Through, no, we're gonna go through a couple of them. <laughs> Not all of them, just a couple. Okay. Only like three. I'm trying to remember my first kiss. <laughs> you know, I probably tried to, to block it the out. First kiss that you want to talk about. That's the. <laughs> that's that's the where thing. it is right there. Damn. First okay. love. First love. Okay. Okay. I th first kiss, first concert, and first movie. Let's start with the concert. First concert. Okay, so what do you want me to do? Am I looking at the camera? You look at me. Um, talk about the first, the first concert. So what is all this for? We do these interstitials called <laughs> What am I doing this for? Are you taking them? Yeah, roll it. It's nonstop. <laughs> so, so you heard it you first something? First, first everything's? First, which one you want to start with? All right, so first Love concert. Love or kiss? I want to start with concert. First concert. Okay? All right, that's fine. All right, my first concert. Um, my first major concert, it was a Michael Jackson concert, and I think I was probably about six or seven. So it was a little bit after Thriller. So it wasn't Thriller time, but it was a little after. And I just remember being in the place, and it's packed, it's huge. And when we drove up, there's all of these ambulances just waiting for people to just pass out. And I'm sitting here like, what are all these ambulances doing? As I'm watching the show, there's people dropping right and left all around me. I'm just looking at the, like, oh my gosh, I will never forget that concert for the energy that was there. It's very exciting. <laughs> that was cool. That was really good. First concert. Okay, let's skip the other ones because I can't think of all of this. I can't think of all of these things. Okay, all right. Actually, let me get one more first and then you can go. All right, let me come on in. Come on in. Oh, I, I was trying to, you know, you try to remember you what in the heck. You like, which one do I want to talk about? <laughs> which first one? You want to know now? I'm joking. Um, so you ready? Three, two, go. So you're asking about my first kiss. <laughs> my first kiss was actually a dare, and um, I remember really liking this guy, and so it's probably one of my friends purposely dared me to kiss him. You know, it wasn't all like that. Just you. But even that, at that moment, when you're really feeling somebody, you feel all nervous. I was all nervous. I was trying to get myself together, play it cool. So I took the dare, and I kissed him, and uh, it was all right. <laughs> How old were you? How old was I? I think I was probably about mm, 12, so. <laughs> That's cool. I'm going to switch with you so I can come over. Good question. You know, you, I so just mean the cool. overall craziness of being in the spotlight. Like one day you're writing songs in your room, and now it's like, damn, I'm in the spotlight. Everybody uh, wants a piece of me. How are you dealing with that? Is this on camera? Yeah. yeah. Um, how am I dealing with it? I mean, one day at a time. It's definitely about adjusting to new things that come in your life, which happens all the time. You know, life is so full of changes that you just have to adjust to the changes that come your way. So, but so far, it's actually pretty good. You know, I definitely am learning to, to realize that there's a time when you have to take for yourself and say, you know what, I would love to, but I need to go ahead and do this, or I need to sit here and meditate, or I need to just be by myself for a minute. So, but, you know, I really love it, and I really appreciate all the blessings that um, are happening and that will continue to happen. So, one day at a time. I think that's the model for life. When fame starts to come upon you, though, is it easier or harder for you to reach for material when you think about writing your songs? Because now your life is not like you're not struggling. You're not you know you're not as hungry. You got the fame, and you go to award shows and video shows and this and that. How do you get the material to create music? Well, um, you know, I I absolutely disagree with that in the sense that um, every day is a struggle. You know, every day is a new lesson. Every day is a new decision that you have to try to make your best, you know what I mean? Every day is a fight for, um, for who and what you are and what you believe in, which is something that you discover as you go, you know? And, and so 
for me, I am very much about real life, you know. There are many phony things that come along with life that I choose not to get wrapped up in. For me, it's about the truth of life, you know. Love, your real people that really love you, those real things are the things you can grab onto, and that's what I choose to grab onto, and it always provokes me to write. So I'm writing every day, no matter if I'm sitting in an award show or if I'm on 151st Street with my homegirl or with my, you know, homeboy. It's just about the truth of life, and that's what I search for. Okay, I'm going to save you a lot of trouble now. It's not the Grammys yet, but you caused you up for several awards. Give us your Grammy speech right now so you can thank everybody. So you don't, if you miss anybody on the show, you can tell right. who you want to thank. Okay, that's cool. Um, I mean, there's definitely so many people I would want to thank, and it's true because for some reason, I, you know, everything leaves you like, who? What did I want to say? Um, definitely want to thank my mother, um, first and foremost, God, always, um, Crucial Keys, which is uh, my production company with my partner, Kerry Brothers. Kerry Brothers for being my backbone every minute. Um, MBK, my management company. For seeing the vision from day one. J Records, Clive Davis. There's a lot of names in that one too. Maybe I'll try to remember them on the day of the show. And um, um, oh, there's so many. See, this is exactly what happens to me up there. <laughs> I just want to thank all the all the truth, all the real people, and especially um, the people that supported and bought the album and just loved the album. You know, whether you boot got the bootleg or not, just for loving the album. <laughs> after a year like this, after a year like last year, what's there to look forward to? You got the Grammy nominations. I'm sure there'll be many awards and, and accolades to come. What's the next big thing that you're looking forward to? I mean, every day is a new beginning. Every day is the next big thing, you know. Um, for me, this is just, just the beginning. You know, I've barely touched the surface for the things that I would love to reach into and try. To do, I'm really looking forward to um, putting together different organizations to um, for the different things that I believe in, the different ideas and, and things to fight for. There's so many things that we can do, so that's really what I'm looking forward to, especially and just every day, every day I'm looking forward to new so things. Expect on the upcoming tour, people buy those tickets right now. Oh. Alicia Keys, what can we expect on the road? Let us give, give us give us a little insight into the show. Now you're a headliner as opposed to opener for Maxwell. Absolutely. Well, you can expect me to have more of a stage. <laughs> Which the first time they kept trying to kick me off the stage, they gave me two two centimeters, and that's all I could perform on. But that's cool. I'm with that. Um, but you know what? It's really just almost like traveling into my mind and and my fantasies and my life as I've